Welcome everyone, it's your boy Zero. And I'm Niners. And uh, we're here with an awesome video. We're actually here with a game developer. Her name is Vicky, and she's from Red Star Interactive. Vicky, introduce yourself, please. Hey guys, thanks Zero and Nanners. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm Vicky. I'm the lead designer developer at Red Star Interactive. So I primarily handle, I actually primarily handle design and gameplay design in general. That is awesome. So, Vicky, I'm really interested in the name of your of your dev team, Red Start. So, let us know what how did you guys come up with the name Red Start Interactive? Yeah. So we were actually just looking around for a fun logo, and the bird, the Red Start, seems pretty cool. And our um, lead artist who's also a fabulous graphic designer, um, basically created the logo. So we decided to just name it after the bird. And so tell us, so what got you into game development? Yeah, so I think I used to work in finance actually in New York and I was looking for um, career change and a few of my friends and I, and that's how we founded Red Start. And we were just looking for like a new, career and uh, we all had a background in like the various forms like an artist a couple developers and then i'd actually also like worked in ux so that's, that's where i carried over into game design and then um i basically spent a couple years fiddling around with unity just and then you know going to like different conventions. Um, just I actually went to NYU Game Center for a little bit just to play test some games. Ooh, nice. And then, yeah. And then in like, I think the fall of 2019, we all decided to give it a go and start up Red Start in, yeah. And I think we opened on Halloween. We incorporated on Halloween of 2019. Okay, okay. Yeah, and yeah, so games are fun, making them is fun, and it's like very creatively liberating. And it's so fun to like have people like just enjoy something that you're making as well. So that's how I got here. As content creators, we can agree with that, you know, like yeah. whenever we see people like even just like a video, it at least for me, it fills me with energy. I don't know about you, Nanners. Yeah, no, I, I think about that all the time. Is like, I like what I do because I like the, I kind of like to see that positive reaction out of people and like, oh, I yeah. made this thing and they enjoy that. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like fun to like interact with your community. Like your face, you're building a community like both of us. Uh, we, we build our communities and it's just like so fun to like have the people in your community to interact with. I think that's like actually probably in the nature of who we are as humans as well. Very community oriented. Definitely. Uh, I actually remember we posted a video for Gran Turismo 7 and Nanners here was interacting with, uh, with, uh, with a fan who had been watching our video and uh, commenting on it. And I'm yeah. just like, oh, wow, Nanners, you're, you're, getting, you're getting a fan there. And he's like, yeah, I'm commenting back. That's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, making friends. We we played your, I believe it's your debut game, right? Uh, Get a Grip Chip. Yes. Yeah. Get Get a Grip Chip was our first game, and so that that came out in the fall of 2020, and then came out on Switch that spring, and then actually on May 12th, it's coming out on Xbox, and we're trying to get the PlayStation 5 to work. <laughs> that is awesome. Get it, get yeah. as many, get it in as many places as possible. Cause, yeah. Um, so it's going to be linked up here. Our uh, gameplay video, if any, if any of you viewers want to see it. But tell us, how would you come up with the idea of get a grip chip? Yeah. Okay. So we wanted one mechanic that would be super fun, and then started to build a story and a backstory around that character. So like like I said, we'd, we'd been like fiddling around for a couple of years just in Unity. And so we we came up with, we liked the grappling mechanic the most. It tested it tested the best. There's a, there's a bar in New York called Wonderville 
that does monthly playtesting and then in addition to the NYU Game Center. So we took it to those places a bit to just like fine tune that mechanic and then um, get feedback, which actually a lot of it was based on the like, everyone wants to know why they were chipped this like little grappling robot. <laughs> so we, so we had the mechanic and then we came up with a story about, I mean, like you're a robot, you work in a factory. So we want to give the player a mission and that mission was to like climb back through the factory and save your friends. And I, yeah, it's like, you know, it's your community of little robots. And so um, we did need an antagonist, but she's not really an antagonist. You just got it's a robot called Scanet Janet, and she just got hit in the head with a cog. So basically, you've got to rescue your battery bot friends and your friend Scanet Janet and get out before this factory collapses. Oh, I don't awesome. have a background in like OSHA compliance at all. So. <laughs> <laughs> I keep hearing OSHA, OSHA, uh, they're, they're, uh, they're ball busters. Yeah. Don't getcha. Yeah. yeah. Well, this, this factory probably, it definitely was not OSHA compliant. There's like random chainsaws just spinning around on the walls in some of the later levels. Uh, seems safe. Yeah, seems safe. Tell us about it. I mean, uh, after, after our initial video, I continued playing it because I just enjoyed it so much. And yeah, some of those, uh, some of those puzzles, some of those uh, levels and uh, the horrible things that just keep coming out, they're the, they're they're pretty tough. They can be tough. Yeah, yeah, they got hard. Uh, level design and pacing is is hard. It's really fun though. Um, just like pacing all the different levels and like scaling up the difficulty and then like fine tuning it. So. Like, what was it? What was your hardest? What was the hardest level for you? Jeez, I wish I wish I had written down uh, the names of the levels. I the second you mentioned chainsaws, it reminded me of a difficult level I played. Um, but I think one of the tougher ones that I had gotten to, I think it was was it lava or was it like acid or something that I was trying to like. It was like this grapple hook thing and you just kept sliding down and then you have to like jump off and then latch onto something else and then keep going yes okay i think that's yeah those are the chase levels there's that's probably the fourth world were there a bunch of like drones in that one i believe like, so yes yeah that's a chase level of the fourth world and that one yeah that one is that one's quite acrobatic and so acrobatic doesn't even describe it <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's actually like, it's similar to, it's like a really scaled up version of the chase level of the second one. I think the spacing between things are a lot more, uh, there, uh, things are a lot closer together. And I think like the, the biggest feature of that one is that a lot of the anchor points that Chip latches onto or like they move in different directions so you you gotta yeah. be like quick on your feet i remember that too on that note uh how would you how has feedback been overall like up to this point with get a group as it was great it was actually um really positive and like people were really enthusiastic i, I think uh i think the level design actually got the most praise and and that's great because we spent a long time just getting that right and like we play tested it a lot just to get the pacing right and that's, that's like that's the way you do it it's, it, it just takes time to get the um, design right there and people actually people also like really love chip actually the the art for <laughs> chip is really amazing it is and, yeah and th there's like little shadows in the when chip turns so okay so one thing that's cool is that chip is a mix of bone based and frame by frame animation mm. so so when you um let's see so when you aim it, you know how like the the aimer actually kind of looks like it's 3d so when you're like aiming down it it points d towards the player yeah and 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 then like rotates around so that's we actually did frame by frame animation on the grapple hook but when it extends 
um, that is actually bone-based animation. And mm. I think, and then Chip's body is mostly bone-based, but there are a couple uh, detailed frames in there that where we actually just switch to a different image instead of using the bones, just to get mm. like a lot of those shadows. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. I, cause I, I, I'm the I'm the main artist and animator here, so I've done a lot of 3D animations and stuff, and I've dealt with bones yeah. and having to yeah. paint the weight onto the bones and the freaking model and stuff. Yeah. Anders over here is thinking, wait a minute, paint the weight on the model and the what? <laughs> yeah, it, it sounds complicated. What? It's, I mean, it is. It's it's like it's just kind of like Vicky said. It takes time, not just with the level design, but also like the art as well. Yeah, yeah, to get like to get the feel and yeah, but doing weight is like crazy. It, it's so cool, but like when you get that weight just right, it's cool. Or, or like um, emotes. I, I think um, like our our little trick to like add a lot more nuance to Chip was that he, he emotes a lot. More. Yeah, and we focused on that. Or just like when you're leaning over an edge, when you're falling, or as you're grappling, like Chip's eyes will move around. I think Chip sweats when you're on an edge. I don't think I remember seeing him sweat. Does he sweat oil or like actual sweat? Um, it's kind of just a neutral substance. Ah, okay. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. Chip does not sweat actual sweat or oil. It's a neutral substance. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna leave it up to everybody to determine <laughs> what chips uh, made of. So you were mentioning weight, and uh, that actually threw me back to a game series that I love, which is Crash Bandicoot. Because yeah. in the first Crash game, everybody, like the very first, first one, like on the PS1, people complained that Crash felt weird when you jumped. Yeah. Like his weight, uh, there's a YouTuber called Cat Icarus, and he explained that, that, to, that to him, it felt like it was like taking a wet uh, tea bag, lifting it and moving it forward. That's how it felt yeah. jumping with Crash, supposedly. I never felt a weirdness with that, but apparently yeah. a lot of people did. And when it came to Crash 2 and 3, that's when people said, yeah, now it feels right. Now the weight feels yeah. correct. Now it actually feels like he's in a actual world existing. And yeah. um, at least with Get a Grip Chip, I can see exactly what you mean about getting the weight just right. Because he it actually kind of felt like, okay, this is a bucket of freaking bolts and mechanics and stuff. Like, it feels like something that can actually be there. Yeah, and like, you're, you're, I mean, you gotta be somewhat sturdy to take on like all these obstacles. But then you also have to like, Chip also has to look nimble at the same time. Mm -hmm. and that's why, I guess that's why the like grapple hook is like so big and such a bright red. And also for readability reasons, to be honest, it, like that is the point that connects to the anchors. Oh, actually, so here's another little tidbit. Chip has wheels yeah. because um, you guys know how hard it is to animate legs. I know how difficult it is to animate <laughs> legs. But like when you start learning like run cycles, I think I've actually, I don't, I'm not, I didn't do the animation for Gitter Chip. So this is my basic knowledge of it. But I, I think like when you start doing like walk run cycles for the first time, it's often like to have you have like, like clunky and it just like, like yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so like mostly just in the interest of like efficiency, we gave chip wheels. That's just, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, and it just like it makes the movement like so much, um, like it's it's much smoother as well. Yeah, I'm used to I'm used to more like I play a lot of Castlevania and like those old yeah. NES games. It was like two frames for them to walk. Yeah, yeah. and it just looks terrible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> actually like. And that's actually like as we move on to newer projects, um, where we are like moving to just doing run cycles now. But actually, we, as a secret, we we cut out arms instead. <laughs> <laughs> cut off the arms. Um, I uh, for my 3D animation class back in high school, I animated this thing called Bob, and it yeah. just think of uh, ever watch Monsters Inc. You guys yes. ever watch that movie? 
Yeah. Uh, remember the little green monster on uh, Mike Wazowski? Yeah. So I accidentally created a character that looked practically almost exactly like him. And yeah. uh, I modeled it. I gave it bones. I painted the weight onto the bones and the model. And I remember trying to, again, do the arm and walk cycle animation. Yeah. And on the by, like when you viewed it from the side, it looked great. But when you turn the camera to view in front, like his arm and his leg went to the right and left as it was going forward and stuff. And I'm like, what the hell is this? <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. Oh, yeah. 3D is like, yeah, it's, it's really hard because like, yeah, you, you get one angle and there's like, you know, you, you have 360 degree view. It's not just like like with 2D. We technically just got like one view. Although, like, yeah, so we do that frame by frame to make it look 3D. Okay, and so uh, just to, just to paint a little bit of like a clearer picture as well for uh, us and the, the viewers. So it's so what was your what was your role like specifically of the of working on the game? Could you kind of break that down for us? Yeah. Um, so I designed like most of the levels, and I, I was actually just lead level designer primarily, and. So all those obstacles you see, you can blame me for <laughs> the really hard ones. And um, so basically, we we had a couple people also doing some of the later levels as well as some of the like earlier ones. So I just basically, so the ones that I didn't do, I just like guided our team through it, just so that they would understand like how their level fit into the game as a whole as well and usually they usually they all had like some really cool ideas so so like the more like the more you have people working on level design i think to a certain extent it's actually i think it's better because you get a meld of different ideas yeah um actually one of the cool things is so i spent a long time on that tutorial that you see at the mm. beginning of the game so that tutorial i think is almost from very early on like early on i knew like you were gonna fall down and then you actually fall down through all the different levels of the factory and so i think actually the the definitely the most challenging part of making chip is that tutorial and just like teaching the player what they need to know and then giving them enough challenge step by step like, cause it's, it has to be like quite linear at that point to just like get them interested and like get them really invested was, was like a, was like a biggie for us. I think, um, I actually reworked the tutorial about a week before launch. That, that's interesting because it, the, the tutorial level, or at least the introduction level as some other games would probably rather put it is yeah. very important because it's, it's like you said, it's how you get people invested in your game it's how you teach them how to play or at least show them what they yeah. can do and how to play yeah uh, it's just, yeah it's just like giving them that foundation was like really big and then like keeping it exciting as well um yeah so i think just like with and that, and that was just with one mechanic so just like with the newer project we're working on we have more character depth so just figuring out picking like picking and choosing what to teach the player at the beginning for chip of like what environmental obstacles chip would face early on was like was a challenge and, and yeah that took it, it was great because i mean it took a lot of playing and feedback so thank you new york city community <laughs> um also for some context like uh all the uh, the bulk of the play testing on the character was done from January to like mid March of 2020. So we wow. just managed to eke that in <laughs> right before everything shut down, and then, um, and then like family and friends like helped later on since like we weren't doing in person meetups, and then eventually we got an online play testing situation going. Oh, for sure. I mean, if you can't get people physically, the internet is huge. Yeah. So. Yeah, you're, you're yeah. gonna find people. Yeah, and just like yeah, video, just having people video record, and that that's how we did the playtesting, like after March of 2020. Yeah. Um, what games in did any games inspire you when creating Get a Grip Chip? 
Okay, so I will say um, about halfway through, which is like really when the level design started taking shape, um, I think Rayman Legends and Donkey Kong were oh, a boy. template. You just, said like, the magic like, word right there. Yeah. <laughs> you said Rayman Legends and Nanners yeah. was all like, oh, yes. But wait, uh, Donkey Kong Country that. or which Donkey Kong? Um, Tropical Freeze, actually. Tropical Freeze. Oh, okay. okay, respect, yeah, cool. respect. Yeah. And um, so, okay, a lot, of, a lot of people get Bionic Commando vibes, and that's like what people were actually pointing out at the beginning, so we just, we just looked at it. I can see it. Yeah, <laughs> Bionic like, Commando, yeah. I haven't heard of that in yeah. forever. Yeah, and um, I'd actually never played it growing up. Okay, so this is like, there, there is a very faint line, but um, I, I really like Doom a lot. And so, and I like the way they keep you moving in that game. Mm. And so that is like one of my pillars of like designing. It's like, how do I keep the player moving? And I also like sleeping. So I do try to find like rest areas for the player. So my okay. life is okay. also an influence. But um, yeah, so that was, I know it's like Doom and Rayman Legends. <laughs> I can I like, can see that and the Rayman yeah. we did or uh, we did Rayman Origins on the channel for a little bit and I played yeah. and finished uh, Rayman Legends uh, like on my own and I could yeah. totally see it because that was that Rayman is really fast paced like they yeah. really yeah. do keep you moving the whole time. So like, yeah, they they do. The the chase levels are heavily influenced by Rayman Legends and it's actually like um, the music was composed for those levels. So it was actually composed first, and then I made the levels to the music. And it's like all original composition um, by this band in New York called Stimmerman. And Ooh. and yeah, so like, she, so she, she composed it and then just like, like I basically just said like, I just need some like accents here and there, but like run with it. Just, and then basically um, there, there's so much depth in the music that it's it's quite fun to it was easy to actually find places to sync up and then like you'll you'll feel it in like some of the chase areas where there's like where when you're on that zip line yeah and, yeah and, you, and there's long notes and yeah it's it's your it, it's a it's a rest area and um you and it's also meant to sync with the music it's funny you mentioned that because it hadn't clicked in my head until you mentioned it that the uh, especially the chase scenes are actually synced up with the music i've always been curious about how that kind of stuff works uh yeah. i used to do a lot of skateboarding videos uh way back in the yeah. day so that's kind of where i got that's where i cut my teeth on this like music plus video you put it together you sync it it works really well so yeah i, I was kind of wondering about how that worked in video games yeah yeah i don't i have no idea how rayman legends did it so they're out there like, let us know Hit us but, up. Um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> you were able to release get a grip trip on the switch we uh, we talked about a little bit about that earlier so how has the reception for get a grip trip been on the switch now like how how are people liking it uh how, how's that experience been oh it's great people like it's definitely like a it's a it's a console game. People like love playing it on the console. And I think the Switch like being portable and the way we've like designed the levels to be like one off levels rather than like a entire open world, it allows for like really easy pick up and play. So I think it like it works really well for the Switch. We're releasing on Xbox and on May twelfth and people have been like really enthusiastic about it as well. And I, it was actually like a great time to be like releasing a game because all these new consoles came out and they're like, the controllers are like massively improved. They're so ergonomic. And like with the Switch being portable, it's, yeah, it's a great time for games, to be honest. It really is. I mean, we've come a long way from the NES and the Game Boy. Yeah. Oh, that was one of the things when we were making chip was to like just see 
how it would work with different controllers as well. And then um, I think with like Neuron Project, we've spent a lot of time controller mapping. I could uh, I could t t talk for probably about a good hour about <laughs> controller mapping and like where certain buttons are. And but like yeah, it's huge. Like the feel of the controller, I think, does make a huge difference in like your your like your um, play experience. It definitely does. Uh... Because if your game don't feel good on the controller, no one's going to want to play it. Yeah. Yeah. I speedrun Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. Oh, and, wow. Yeah. And that's also an indie game. It's um essentially inspired by like Castlevania, but they added yeah. abilities. Now for the speedrun, the category that I run, you have to constantly be, almost constantly be holding the attack button to charge. But you yeah. still need to press the other two face buttons to run and to use your sub weapon. And oh, uh, yeah and to jump and it's it's so obnoxious the way they set it up because they could have just done it that you double tap forward and you hold it and you're just running constantly but if you double tap forward it stops running after a little while so you have to mash the run button so what i kind of developed and i don't know we brought up carpal tunnel earlier <laughs> I, I hold the dash button with my thumb and then i bring over my uh okay. no i i dance between the like two of the face buttons on the left and the bottom with my yeah. thumb and then for the face button on the right i bring over my index finger and i start sliding it up and down to like spam the run button and uh, uh yeah. sort of like that claw method with your I index finger say, do you yeah, do the claw? Do yeah you do I, the that's claw? what I, that's oh, what yeah. i have to do because they designed the controls so terribly oh my god that's yeah that's that's rough but it seems like the, the claw seems like a common <laughs> thing yeah controller mapping is like it's entire category of design like controller mapping design is like a whole category i think um we we had played around with different controls um for chip actually and so it, it's two joysticks to mm -hmm. aim but you can use your d-pad to move um and then so and then i think the triggers to shoot and we we moved it to the triggers because we really wanted that 360 aim yeah and and so um i and so like we were like toying around with whether it would just be i think we spent quite a bit of time on this like like the control over chip is like quite high and um which now i look back on it is like a really awesome thing that it's pretty came. remarkable actually i mean in especially in a lot of older games when you deal with the difficult level and you know the controls aren't necessarily that super tight you keep thinking to yourself man this game sucks like this game is cheap yeah. like oh this death was cheap or whatever yeah. but get a grip chip i don't feel that like at all because cool. everything just feels so tight like you you're at fault if you mess up you screwed up Thanks. Yeah, I, that, um, yeah, that's what we really like wanted was, yeah, that I, I know that feeling is like, this is total BS. Like, yeah. It's just like, where you like feel bad at a game or something like, you know, like, uh, we wanted people to feel good and, you know, and maybe suffer a little bit because it's one hit. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is something that, that is yeah. something that I, that, that I noticed. Like the second I realized, yeah. oh, this is one hit kill. Yeah, I gotta be on my toes. Yeah, it, we're we try to be we're generous with the checkpoints. Yeah, honestly. that actually came in towards the end after like some uh, yeah, it was like halfway through the project. I think there was only originally about three checkpoints per level. Ooh, I think there's that's five a... or six now. But then yeah. we added the skin that um, basically turns off all checkpoints. <laughs> as well if you oh the so game, basically tear your hair out difficulty yeah ah. yeah you can you can do that as well so yeah so for the um for the checkpoints in in chip basically there there's like long runways like after the checkpoints to just like give you some freedom as mm. well so we just have like yeah it, it's the standard checkpoint and um, I guess there's some motivation for the checkpoint because, like, one of the things like we set up was that you have to deliver your battery bot to the little vacuum tube that's yeah. also the checkpoint, and then you you actually get it. 
All right, so let's move on to your next projects because when I met you last year physically, you showed me this cute little dinosaur game and I fell in love with it and I'm sure Nanners would love to hear about it. So tell us about your new project. Does it have a name yet? What is it about? Yeah, okay, so we don't have a name yet. We have a name for the character and that name is Ripley because mm. you play as a very hungry dinosaur and um, you know, and you eat things. So, I, so like I talked about earlier about how basically like we, we've just like designed a couple things to just for some efficiency purposes. And so this is where we took out the R, by the way. Ripley, mm. Ripley needs to eat everything because Ripley has no arms, but we're now animating legs, but we didn't. Animating arms is hard, so with the legs. So Ripley's got like stumpy little arms. But, um, so Ripley's got jaws of steel and basically where we're at is the backstory is it's actually like vaguely based in New York and <laughs> basically some alien has come in and poisoned the water supply and, um, Everyone, all your city denizens have uh, drank said poisoned water and are incapacitated in the bathroom. Oh, so, no. it's, yeah, so it's your job to basically deliver the medicine. And um, and so similar to like Chip, like the whole collectathon theme and like people just really enjoyed like finding the battery bot so you've got to like find your fellow citizens and give them that but like ripley's got like a few new tricks now and yeah it's, i'll talk about like how controller is a huge part of this but we had to jump back in okay and so <laughs> uh, i don't know if you remember like like shoot stuff yeah of, you were shoot uh, i remember yeah. shooting fireballs yes yeah fireballs and so a lot of the premises, I think, where we're going with this is like, you know, you eat your balls, absorb their power, and now you can shoot stuff, that stuff out of your face. And, you know, since if you can shoot stuff out of your face, we figured you could eat. And you're like the one creature of this city, of New York City, that's inhabited by dinos. <laughs> um, that doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't get sick from like all the poisoned water, and so you can just like eat all the other creatures around you to get rid of them. And so we're we're basically like we're looking at combat this time around. And so I, I think you had played like just a a essentially just like barely even a prototype. Uh, play NYC. We we did just we're just testing out the um, the melee and the shooting at that point and some of the jumping and, and so like yeah it's really fun and the character is like really fun and plus everyone can relate to me. especially people in New York. <laughs> I mean you're telling me you're telling you're telling us. I can play as a as a small, cute little dinosaur with his big ass head shooting fireballs and eating stuff. Yep. I mean, that's kind of what we do here all the time. Sans the freaking fireball shooting, even yeah. though we'd all I mean, love to. Like dream. Yeah, you used to like live your best dream, just like <laughs> eat all day. And yeah, I think we're gonna put in like, for Ripley. We're gonna put in like a lot of um, like New York references. Oh, what's what's Ripley's favorite food gonna be? If it's not know. pizza, I, I'm gonna be upset. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like particularly love sushi, and I swear I, I I might actually okay. So the idea of like so there's gonna be combat, and so I actually wanted to put in an automat to as like a really callback because it's not like it's gonna be vaguely New York esque, and it's it's just more it's a city calling back. There's gonna be little references to New York. But like, you know, you, you need a place to like pick up that like one time heal or something. I don't, do you guys know, have you guys like heard of automats? Uh, I know exactly what an automat is. Nanners, do you know what it is? No, I don't. Okay, so let, um, let me explain it. If anyone has ever watched old school Looney Tunes or Tom and Jerry and stuff like that, 
uh, if you ever see them go up to like a wall that has a whole bunch of little doors and a coin slot, that's what an automat is. Mm. Basically, there's like this glass little window door thing you can open that only unlocks after you pay it. And yeah. it usually has desserts or uh, pre-cooked food that's kept warm or something like that. And uh, I always found those interesting. But again, these are old cartoons. Yeah. I never dealt with one in real life. So the fact that you're bringing back automats in your next game, at least you're thinking about doing that, is actually exciting to me because that's cool. Uh, yeah. I know that there's a place in New York that supposedly does it, but I don't know if it's still around because oh. Rona went ahead and uh, yeah. took us for a yeah. ride. I know some people who were like, I've when automats were a thing in New York. I think they, they lasted until the 1980s before doing away, but they really add some like fun variety. It's like this little slice of New York as well. At least oh, old school uh, New York. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. Um, there is another one. Um, I want to try this, but basically it's like one of the things I want to put in is like, basically a car just following around in the background <laughs> and that's because that's just the experience of trying to find parking <laughs> oh my god nanners that, that must hit way too close to home yeah, uh, yeah. The, the happiest time of my life looking for parking <laughs> in New York yeah um yeah so I think I, I found a I found a Thursday spot in front of my apartment today mm, oh and it's so for everybody else that's watching it's saturday so i don't have to move the car until thursday that's like winning the lottery pretty much yeah, yeah so i it's gonna be like a love letter to new york i think it's just like i've got there's a ton of material to mine from i'm i'm sure you guys will you guys will appreciate oh, the stuff we've oh. Done. <laughs> 100 I, I already tried the pre-alpha demo beta work in progress game thing that you showed off last yeah. year and i already liked it i just want to see more of it obviously yeah. uh but while we were uh talking through email you also did mention a different game i think you called it yeah. uh body bugs or something like that yeah so that's that's what we've been working on since play nyc and now so body bugs is um basically like a new extension of Get a grip chip, and that was me with Games for Change, and as part of the Summer Game Challenge, and basically we took Get a Grip Chip and like retweaked the levels and and just like you know made them fit for a game inside the human body. Ooh. So yeah, yeah. so it, it's definitely if you're getting bad vibes, that was like and. Um, Osmosis Jones vibes. Those those were like really big influences. That is awesome. Yeah. That is really cool. <laughs> yeah, and, and for and so like um, like on one hand we we took advantage of this like partnership to try a couple new things. So like there's Parallax now, and which which is a subtle, trick, but it was like it's gonna uh, make a big difference. Um, yeah. Very quick. Very quick tidbit. In high school, I worked on a couple of fan RPGs using RPG yeah. Maker. Oh, cool. Um, and uh, I remember wondering, what does parallax mean, right? So I tried it out and I said to myself, oh, that's when like the foreground and the background move like in different speeds and stuff. And it yeah. gives you that feeling of depth. So just yeah. adding that to any game just changes the feel of it completely. Yeah, it really does. It made a huge difference and like made uh, body bugs like way more immersive. So you like, so now Chip is a synthetic white blood cell and like your human body is really not feeling well. So mm. this is like a new piece of medical technology. And like, so Chip's goal is to, um, you know, go in and like, like reactivate all the white blood cells. So it's, it's that same like collectathon. But then it takes place in the digestive system. So like we start in the mouth, go down to the esophagus, and then you go into the stomach, and then like go into the small intestine, and then finish out in the large intestine. I'm not gonna give away what happens at the end. I'm sure you can. 
I was about to say, like, wait a minute, don't you... Hey, don't we get to the exit after that? Isn't the exit the old uh, backside? <laughs> there is, yeah, there is an exit point. So um, that's coming out on May 12th. That's actually, Body Box is going to launch the same day as Get a Grip Chip coming out on the Xbox as well. So we just like took the time to like do both together. And so Body Bugs will on Xbox as well. And oh, and it's gonna be—it's actually gonna be free on our website. We are—we were actually able to get it working on our website, and just like because that's—that was the educational component. We added educational content to it as well. Nice. And, Always appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, it's fun. Um, we actually we we also translated this one to Japanese as well. That and, is uh, uh, most excellent, actually. Yeah, I'm really excited for like people to see body bugs and as well. It, it's oh. also uh, it's not one hit kills. We we actually added sure you can make it one hit kills, but since it was like for like was going to be more publicly available, um, there's now a setting where you reach the amount of health that you have. All right, so we're running out of time. So before we do that, we got a few personal questions we'd like to ask you. So what is your favorite console? Ooh, that's a hard one. It's a mix between, and I think this is a nostalgia factor. It's obviously the Nintendo Switch, but I think that's because of the Game Boy. The Game Boy was my first like console. Sorry, it was a handheld, but it was my first one. And the PS2, because I used to do gymnastics when I was a little kid, and I, instead of staying late to do gymnastics, one of the kids just let me play the PS2. So I spent a long time playing the PS2. <laughs> I mean, who <laughs> hasn't, really? Yeah. So how about your favorite game genre? Um, okay, like, to play act, like, third person action hands down. Um, I think my favorite game actually might be God of War 4. <laughs> oh, so, okay. You're t- so uh, the, the new God of War, right? Yeah, the one that came out in 2018. I really yeah. like that. It's like paced crazy well and like the Valkyries are so f***ing hot. But I like loved it. Actually, I only fought one, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> it took me an hour. <laughs> but like the story's really good and like so just that whole thing of like i don't know if that's the genre but like the third person like open world-esque game really like playing that and just wandering around hey you're talking to two guys who also love those kind of games i mean yeah. we we love uncharted yeah oh, I love uncharted. it's a third person action game and yeah. we even played through uncharted one on the channel it's just oh really it's oh, hard to hate so that genre it's just so yeah it's so endearing, it grabs you. I know. Uh, Vicky, you're also going to be at PAX East, aren't you? Yes. Are you going to be boothing there? I, I'm not boothing, I'm actually on a panel. Oh, you're on, oh, a, pan- you're on a panel? Yeah. Let us know what panel you're at for anybody who might okay. watch this beforehand. So I'm on a panel with Madeline Lee from Jen Fanad. Um, I think they're they're like a, a RuneScape type, like open game ad- adventure game and it's like a mpg but um basically we're going to i think we're speaking on friday at three at the bobcat theater and we're just we're talking about the retro revival of games coming out these days yes um, yeah so and, and just like and the, like the modern twist that they've like added to it and um like so I, i'm actually going to talk about a bunch of games that like have a lot of a lot of this like retro feel in terms of like their visuals their audio and their anim- gameplay and th- that's why i've like talked so much is because like the way they've like like it feels like older games but about like how they've changed the gameplay to be a lot more accessible yeah as well and so that that's friday um, at 3 p.m. Okay. Bobcat Theater. Yeah, and if anybody's yeah. there, definitely go check it out. Yeah, come say hi. Um, yeah, I, I would love to. I'm just so excited to like meet people as well. Yeah. I totally, I totally agree. 
totally agree. We only yeah. wish we could be there, you know? Yeah. No. We will not be there this year. No uh, TSG at Pexy. Yeah. May maybe yeah. next year. It all depends on how it goes. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so we're coming up at the very end of the, uh, the interview. So tell everyone where they can find you, where they can find Red Star, where they can find Get a Grip Chip, and look forward to your next games. Yeah, so you can find um, you can find all of Red Start's games like Get a Grip Chip, Body Bugs at redstart.io. Um, find Get a Grip Chip on Steam, Nintendo Switch, soon to be Xbox on May 12th. And then Body Bugs is coming out also on Steam, Nintendo Switch, and Xbox on May 12th. Also, will be free on our website. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram, and we also have a Discord that we engage with people on. So Twitter is also redstart underscore IO, and Instagram is redstart IO as well. Excellent. Uh, well, Vicky, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. Yeah. This interview went Thanks, pretty man. long, but I'm pretty sure everyone's going to enjoy it. Yeah, and yeah, hopefully, like, uh, you guys got tons of content to cut and stuff. And yeah, yeah, so, yeah, I have found that, like, just, you know, if we, like, if we run them a little bit long, it just gives you guys, like, a lot more freedom and stuff to work with as well. Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. If anything, there might just be, like, a focused interview, and, we, and we'll yeah. probably release, like, a part two that just goes straight into, like, whatever else we spoke about. Alrighty. Well, uh, thank you guys so much. Yeah, for no, thank you. Time. This is so much fun. It really was. It was a great conversation. We hope the uh, people at home enjoy it. Definitely go check out Get a Crip Chip and uh, Red Start. And uh, we'll link all that stuff in the description uh, below. And uh, thank you guys for watching us. Try to get some additional interviews going as well at some point in the future. Uh, might have one planned. Not, not sure yet. And uh, each. Yeah, you know, check us out, two super gamers. Like, comment, subscribe. And yeah, we'll catch you guys next time. Bye. Cool. Thank you. Bye.